Welcome everyone to our daily broadcast on Kabbalah for Heretics. As you know by now in the listening audience, um, for most of the week we go through the Zohar volume by volume, cover to cover, page by page, sentence by sentence, and have been doing that for 20 five years. Very few, very, very few days have we gone without teaching from the Zohar. So here we've been for 25 years, reliably, every day. Same time, same place. Now a very different and expanded station, our YouTube channel, teaching the Zohar. And by doing that, as I say every morning, and I'm sure you're getting bored with it, I love hearing it. Um, we finished volumes one, two, and three, and are very, very close to finishing volume four. Let's get back into volume four where we left off. Rabbi Yossi discoursed on the verse, the burden of silence, the Masaduma. One calleth unto me from out of Seir, watchman, what of the night? This verse, he says, has already been expounded in many places, indeed, and even by me several times, several days we've devoted this so far to talking about this very passage. This verse, he said, has already been expounded in many ways, but it can also be interpreted as follows. To all the other exiles of Israel, a term was set for how long they would be in exile. A term was set. And their duration, that they would be in exile, was known beforehand. But the exile of Edom, the exile of Edom, that first incarnation, as it were, of Esau, who swears to kill Jacob, the father of the, Edom, the father of the Gentiles, And all of them, all of them are in a greater masaduma, a greater burden of silence. They are the burden of silence. The lost sheep of the house of Israel are the burden of silence. Those lost, those Jews, those Jewish souls lost among the Gentiles, Jews who don't realize they are Jews, but think themselves to be Gentiles. They are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus says to the 72 missionaries, he says, do not just go to Gentiles, but instead go to find the lost sheep of the house of Israel from among the Gentiles. That's so fundamental to our work here in Dunmore West. Says the Holy One, blessed be he, one calls to me from Seir, the souls of those trapped in Seir, in the land of Esau, in the land of the Gentile, in the consciousness of the Gentile, call out to God to be saved, to be brought into the house of Israel, equal to the Israelites born there. Just as Jacob and Esau worked it out on the banks of the river Jebek, where, where finally Jacob says, brother, take half of mine. God has been good to me. And meaning, take half of the birthright and the promises which you were so angry at not receiving. And Esau says, no, brother, keep what is yours. He finally admits that they really did belong to Jacob. But Jacob insists, and finally, Esau accepts his half of the birthright and the promises. The two are now one. And Esau, the father of the Gentiles, says to Jacob, the father of the Jews, 
I will follow me down into Seir. Follow me down into Seir, where they will, in fact, do for the other Gentiles of Seir together what Jacob did for Esau independently. But Jacob says, no, you go on ahead of me and I'll catch up with you. I'll come at a slower pace. But instead, Jacob goes up to Sukkot, while Esau goes down into Seir. And Jacob goes up to Sukkot to build the house of Israel and to build shelters, Sukkot, Sukkot. coming into the house of Israel and would need shelters in the house of Israel. The problem is, until Shabtai Tzvi and Jacob Frank, there was no attempt for Jacob to fulfill his promise to Esau to meet him in Seir. And even with Jacob Frank and Shabtai Tzvi, it was only a partial endeavor for Jacob to fulfill his promise to meet Esau in Seir. We talked about why it was only partially successful yesterday. The Blessed Holy One says, a voice, one calls to me from Seir. The soul of the Gentile, as well as the soul of the Jew trapped in the Gentile, the mixed multitude, as it were, cries out to God. One calls to me from Seir. I have heard a voice from those who are oppressed and prostrate in the exile of Seir. asking me what I have done with my matrona. Thereupon the Holy One, blessed be he, assembles all his court and says, see how my beloved children forget their own oppression and think only of the matrona, the queen, the great feminine aspect of God, saying to me, thou who art called keeper, how dost thou keep thyself and thy name and thy house? Remember, thousands of years later, Shabtai Tzvi was made keeper of the house. The very title was given to him by the Sultan of Turkey. It had much more symbolic value than actual value. I mean, it was a, it was a, a post given by the Sultan to various people to honor them and carried a bit of money, but it was the symbolic part of it, that he was made keeper of the gates. Just as it says God or the Messiah would be. So there is an acknowledgement on the part of the Sultan of Turkey that this Shabtai Tzvi is indeed Mashiach, is indeed the Jewish Messiah, and therefore also probably the Muslim Messiah, because it's the same concept in Islam. Then the Holy One, blessed be he, answers them saying, I have not forgotten my guardianship, for I will yet receive the Matrona and be with her. The reuniting of them. Remember, that's what's going on in the ten Sephirois. When you get down the center column, there is the sixth Sephira in the center column, and that is the groom. And there is the tenth Sephira directly below that. Uh, and that is the fallen Shekhinah, the bride. I will yet be reunited with her, says God. How? By man who turns 
who turns the fallen Shekhinah. So she is looking up at the groom because all the Sephirites are looking down. They see what is below them, but not what is above them. Man turns her. Turns her. Shuva, repentance. This is why it said even God does repentance. Even God turns, yes. The throne of the Shekhinah, the fallen Shekhinah, that has fallen from Atalus into the realm of of the world, she is turned by man. So now she's facing the groom, and she sees the groom, and the groom who has always seen her now has his attention returned, and the two of and she then rises up to have union with the groom. The fallen bride and the smaller face of God, the fallen bride rises up to merge with God, the smaller face of God, thereby completing God. I have not forgotten my guardianship, yet will I receive her and be with her. The morning has come, for at first God ascended aloft to that morning which is ever ready for him. Now it is time to be joined to, quote, the night. The night also is ready and must be joined with, listen, the dark side, the evil side, the side of unholiness, the sitra Akra, must also be joined into by God. That's what this is saying. It's not put it away. It's entering into it in order to transform it. Then the Holy One, blessed be He, answers them, saying, I have not forgotten my guardianship, for I will yet receive her and be with her. The morning has come, for at first God ascended aloft to that morning which is ever ready for him. Now it is time to be joined to, quote, the night, unquote, the Sitra Akra, the side of evil. It must be joined with, not just acknowledged, not just saying, oh, yes, God creates evil as well as good. God is evil as well as good. And in order for God to be completed, the side of holiness must enter into literally the side of unholiness. It says, I have not forgotten my guardianship, for I will yet receive her and be with her. The morning has come, for at first God ascended aloft to that morning which is ever ready for him. Now it is time to be joined to the night. And the night too is ready. But for your sakes, it has been delayed. And if you ask why, the answer is Shuva, return to it in repentance, and then come to me, and we shall all place ourselves in a row and return to our place, as it is written, quote, and the Lord thy God will return with thy captivity and will return and gather thee from all the Gentiles. Jesus says, go amongst the Gentiles, rescue the lost sheep of the house of Israel who are among them. The word return occurs here twice. Once referring to God and the other to the community of Israel. God must also repent of his sins and crimes against man, just as man must repent for his sins and crimes against God. That's why we often teach that Jesus died on the cross not to wash away the sins of man against God, but in fact to wash away the sins of God against man. The word repentance then 
occurs in two places. And the Lord thy God will return with thy captivity and will return and gather thee from all the peoples. The word shuva, return, repentance, occurs here twice. You can hear it. Once referring to the Holy One, blessed be he, and once to the community of Israel. Listen to the phrase. It does say that. It's very easy to miss if you're not giving the Kabbalistic interpretation. And the Lord thy God will return, will do tshuva with thy captivity. And the Lord thy God will do tshuva with thy captivity. That's the first mention of tshuva. That is for the sake of God. And then it says, it says, and will return and gather thee from all the people to return. That is the community of Israel. But first, God must repent in order to gather up the children of Israel to repent. I hope this is getting through. I mean, this is just horrible for people who are very fundamentalist and know nothing of oral Torah or insist upon interpreting the Zohar at least as goody, 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 two shoes, uh, peaches and cream, everything is good, God is only loving, that kind of shit. But that is not what the Zohar tells us. It's not telling that to us right now. It's telling us that God must repent of his sins against man. And then man can repent of his sins against God. Now remember, there, this is all taking place both inside and at the opening of this cave in the rock. And there are merchants, at least one, that have come and are standing there listening to all of this. And it says, the merchant then discoursed on the verse, quote, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, from Job 38.7. Listen again. When the morning stars sang. How is Jesus described in one of the Gospels? As the bright and morning star. This statement is one of the very precise prefigurations and prophecies of the Messiah, even prophesying what the Messiah will be called. Bright and morning star. When the morning star sang together, the morning stars sang together. I hope you remember. I, it's going to take too much to fish out my copy of the uh, of the Bible to to quote that exactly to you. But I think it's. I think it's John, and it describes Jesus as the bright morning star, exactly what is referred to here. When God, he says, comes to have joyous communion with the righteous in the Garden of Eden, everything in the lower world and all upper and lower angels arise to meet him, and all the trees in the garden break forth into song before him, and even the birds of the earth utter praise before him. And then a flame goes forth and strikes the wing of the cock, and it bursts into praise of the holy king and calls to men to engage themselves in the study. Now, we'll get to this in detail tomorrow morning. I just wanted to read it to you to prepare you for where we're going to go tomorrow morning. Right now, I'm going to stop. Okay. Brings me to the end of this broadcast. And I'm going to do now what I've been doing at the end of every broadcast and will continue doing for a year, which is to recite the Holy Kaddish, the prayer for the dead, and uh, for the soul of our departed Sadiq and beloved friend, Leonard Cohen. Yiskadal v'yiskadal k'dash me'rabo, bo'modiv rochiru se'i v'yamlech machu se'i,
וכאחרון גם אחרון אותך אה לכל בית ישראל, ועגלו ובזמן כל רבים לו אמן. יהי שמו רבו ומברך לעולם ומעל מאיה. יש ברך ויש טבח ויש פרעה ויש סלמם ויש נעשה ויש סדר ויש עלה ויש סלל. שמי דקודשו הברוך הוא. לעולם ולן בירכוסה ושירוסה תושפכוסה. ונחמוסו דאמרון בו מובים לו אמן. יהי שלמה רבא מן שמיא, וחיינו אלינו ויכול ישראל אלבים לו אמן. עושה שלום במרמוב, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ויכול ישראל אלבים לו אמן. And please everyone say אמן. Go now in peace. As you go through the world, please do not be led by the world. Do not be led by another person. And for God's sake, do not be led by your ego, but rather be led by the Holy Spirit who is speaking to you now at this moment and joining you to continue listening to her, following her as you go through the world today. That faint voice whispering under the voices of the world leading you.